Hey, hey, Sean here from Bacon and Games. This is the second video in our Snake Code Along series. In the first video, we did some basic project setup and got our player moving. So if you haven't checked that out yet, the link will be in the description down below. In today's video, we're going to get our snake wrapping from one side of the screen to the other. So let's get started. When we left off, we got our character moving, but once it goes off the screen, it's gone forever. In order to make the snake wrap from the left side of the screen back to the right, we're gonna build a little helper node that's gonna keep track of where our boundaries are, and we're gonna be able to ping it to find out whether we've gone outside of them. So let's start by adding another node 2D. We're gonna call this bounds. And to that, we're going to add two marker 2Ds. A marker 2D is just gonna give you a crosshair gizmo that you can drop into your game scene to visually mark something in X and Y coordinates. I'm gonna name this one upper left, and I'm gonna duplicate it with command D. And we're gonna make another one called lower right. If I select these and go to our move tool, you can see we actually have two little gizmos that we can drag around. Here's one, here's the other. And for right now, I'm going to position this as close to the bottom right-hand corner as I can. And that's going to give us the boundaries of our screen. This is our upper leftmost position. This is the bottom right. And between them, we form an entire rectangle. Let's add a script to our bounds node. Give it a class name of bounds, and let's get references to our two boundary markers. Let's create four variables that we can use to store the boundaries of our game. In the onReady function, we can access the positions of our two markers and store those values as our minimum and maximum positions. This isn't strictly necessary because we could access these positions directly, however, these short variables are easier to type, and they read a little bit more like what they actually are. The next thing we're going to do is write a function called wrap vector, which is going to take a vector 2, and it's going to return a vector 2. Now, there's not very much to this function. We're going to use this wrap vector function to pass in the position we'd like to move the player to. And it's either going to return the vector that we gave it if it's within bounds, or it's going to return the leftmost x coordinate if we've gone too far to the right, the rightmost if we've gone too far to the left, and so on and so forth. So let's see how we implement that. First, we're going to need to grab a reference to our bounds. So let's drag that in here, release with a control click, and let's force it to type bounds so that we get our code completion. Now, down here, before we set the position, let's check it against our wrap vector. So we can feed it new position. If it's within bounds, it'll just return the same position we gave it. And if it's out of bounds, it'll return the wrap position. So now, we test our game. Our player wraps nicely. Top to the bottom, left to the right, and so forth. The next thing I'd like to do, because this window is a little bit gigantic, let's change the size of our game. So flipping back over to 2D, the other problem this is going to solve is, if you take a look at our marker, our game size is not exactly in 32 by 32 dimensions. So we're gonna go up to Project, Project Settings, Window, and right now we've got this giant window that isn't necessarily in 32 by 32 increments. And I don't know the exact number we want, but I do know the ratio. So I can actually use a shortcut by multiplying 25 by our grid size and hit Enter, and 14 by 32 to get our height. So we're gonna have a window of 800 by 448. Now when I come back, you can see here, we've got a smaller window size that fits directly 
onto the grid. And now all I have to do is move this marker into the bottom corner. And if I run it again, everything still works exactly as we wanted it to. Since we've got a little bit of time left, let's go ahead and add a tile map so we can put a very basic background grid in place. In Snake, especially when you're wrapping from one side to the other, it helps to have a visual guide to show you what row or column you're in when you're lining up your moves. We can select Gameplay, search for Tile Map, and we're going to want to drag this up to the top because we want it to be behind everything. Whoops, there we go. And Tile Map is going to require a tile set. So with our tile map selected, we can click on this empty dropdown and select new tile set. We can click on that to change some of the settings. Now we know our tiles are 32 by 32, so I'm gonna change the default from, from 16 to 32. Now, of course, our tile set needs some actual tiles. So let's grab in this grid. It's gonna ask if we wanna automatically create tiles in the Atlas. For this very basic example, we can just click yes. Now I can click over to my tile map, select my tile, select the rectangular paint tool, and you'll actually need the selection tool up here selected for this to work. And now I can paint my tiles in to fit the size of our window. And let me click off of that so we don't see the orange anymore. Now when we play this, you can see we'll have a grid that gives us a visual guideline where we'll come out when we wrap around. In the next video, we're going to build our spawner class to randomly drop food, and we'll implement our tail class so that our snake can grow each time it eats. If you learned something or just want to be nice, please like or subscribe to help me reach more lovely makers like yourself. Also, feel free to drop a comment down below if you have questions about anything we've covered so far. Until next time, be kind to yourself and be kind to others.